Okay, we're in section 113. There'll be contents to read through, examples to look at, and exercise to get busy with. My name is Ron Bannon. This is a draft version of my adaption of Webster Wells' Advanced Course in Algebra, which dates back to 1904. Uh, this document, a PDF, is being made available to the Prison Mathematics Project participants only. This document will also be published at a later date. Um, I realize there are teachers and students out there that are not involved with the project. If you're interested in receiving a copy of this, all I can say is you need to email me and I'll let you know when it's going to get published. My email address is Bannon, that's B as in boy, the at symbol, N-N-O-N dot U-S. <coughs> Let's read through the section, theory of numbers. All right. Now, when Wells uses the term numbers, he's really talking about the, um, the positive integers. He does mention that. Um, it's certainly in common language. That's what we would certainly assume to be the case when someone says, give me a number. Most people would believe that you want a positive integer. That's what most people would believe. Now, the positive integers, just to remind you, are going to be like numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4. All right? Now, granted, it's, it's, it's a tough read, but we do want to emphasize that it's, it's important you start to read even if you don't understand what you're reading, you may have to go back to it. You may not ever understand it. And there's a lot of things I read in mathematics that I have a really tough time with that i got to keep reading it over and over again. And I really don't have a, fully, a full appreciation of what they're saying sometimes, but I, I catch on a little bit at a time, and before you know it, I'm off and running. All right? Does that mean I'm not, I'm not going to get stuck sometimes? Of course I'm going to get stuck. It happens to me every single time. All right, so what I want to do is I want to you know, start going through the problems and... Um, Again, when he uses the word numbers, I, I got to understand what he's talking about. You have my positive integers. So if I were writing down integers that are consecutive, I would say like n, the next integer would be n plus 1, n plus 2, and so, you know, so forth and so on. But then he says something interesting. He says something about them being multiples of 3. All right? Now, granted, I, you know, I got to understand what that means, and I, I want to write that down for you. So I'm going to say, you know, I guess one of the integers could be 3n. Now, by the way, I know he said not multiples, but I'm still talking about multiples of 3. What would the next integer be? It would be 3n plus 1. What would the next integer be? 3n plus 2. What's interesting about this is you can go in any direction you want. For example, instead of going up by 1, it can go down by 1. So you can do 3n minus 1, 3n minus 2. And you can play this game all day long, by the way. 3n minus 3. Now, would it generate all the integers? Of course it would. For example, if you chose n to be 1, what would you get? Well, gee, you start with 0 then. I wouldn't start with 1. I'll cross this one out. If I start with 1, now, would I get all the integers? Let's see. I'd get 3 minus 2 is 1. 3 minus 1 is 2. Yeah, I could do that. All right? So my understanding over here is I want to just try to understand what he's saying. Let me cross this out over here. That's a good list of integers, by the way, are consecutive. Some are multiples of 3, some are not multiples of 3. So it says two consecutive, uh, I'm going to use the word integer, by the way, positive integers, not multiples of 3. So I'm going to extend the list a little tiny bit, and this is going to be 3n plus 3. So I'm going to point out the ones that are divisible by 3. For example, this divides by 3, and this divides by 3. How do I know that? Let me write that down for you. 3n divides by 3, you get n. 3n plus 3 divides by 3, you get n plus 1. Again, it is an integer, they divide by 3. That's not a problem. What I want to convince you, though, is these guys over here that are in between those two are not, whoops, sorry about that, are not divisible by 3. I want to convince you of that. How am I going to do that? I'm going to try to divide it by 3. So 3n plus 1 divided by 3 would be n plus 1 third. Well, there's not an integer. It's not divisible by 3. Let's do the next one. By the way, when I say um, divisible by 3, I mean that it's going to be an integer number, no fractional result. So those ones would be 3n plus 2 divided by 3. What do you get? n plus 2 thirds. Still not an integer. So these things are the numbers I'm looking at. All right, let me erase everything else. What do they say, though? They say two consecutive numbers that are not multiples of 3. 
their sum is a multiple of three. Well, let me check that out. Let me see if that's true. So let me put their sum down. 3n plus 1 plus 3n plus 2. Is it a multiple of 3? In other words, does it divide by 3? I don't know. What do you get? 6n. 1 plus 2 is 3. Divide by 3. What do you get? You get 2n plus 1. Clearly an integer. 2n's an integer and 1's an integer. Certainly divides in. All right, let's look, look at the next one. And again, I, I know people looking at it and saying, well, you know, what, what do you want me to do? Well, it'd be nice if you thought about it. I'm not trying to memorize it. A lot of times I look at these things and get stuck on them too. I don't know where to start. Well, I'm going to start by, by thinking about it. And it says that every perfect square is of the form 5n. So I'm going to say that's something to do with 5, right? So I'm going to write down a sequence for you. So, and they're consecutive integers, by the way. What's the next integer going to be? 5n plus 1. What's the next one going to be? 5n plus 2. What's the next one going to be? 5n plus 3. And I'll, I'll go in both directions and go down from that. What do you get? 5n minus 1. 5n minus 2. Let's see. What would you get? 5n minus 3. And you could do this game all day long. 5n minus 4. And I, I'm going to start with 1. Right? And, and see what the sequence you get. If you started with 1, you'd get... Well, you get the, if I start with n as 1, what would you get? You would get, let's see, 5 minus 4 is 1. Then you get 2, 3. Well, this certainly does generate a sequence of integers. I know that much. All right, that's, that's good news for me. Now, let's say you started at 2. All right, let's say you started at 2. So what, what would 2 give you? That would give you 10 minus 4, which is 6, right? So that, that list would start at 6. And if I start at 1, that list would start at 1. So I want to go to up to 1 to 5. All right, so let's do that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. i got to do those over there. Let's make sure I count that up right. This one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. Now when I say that, I hope you realize that if I took another number in general, I just get the next list up and it'd go on forever. So that's all I need to deal with, these first five here. I'm gonna erase the rest. And I wanna see what they said about it. And what did they say? They said every perfect square is of the form. Well, I gotta write their squares down now. And what I'm gonna do is uh, I know, by the way, I'm not sort of using the M. That doesn't matter to me. I'm going to square 5N minus 4. And what would that give me? 25N squared minus 40N plus 16. Well, you know what? I'm not seeing this. But maybe I'm seeing this over here. But that 16 bothers me. So what would I do? I'd multiply... I'm sorry, I factor part of it. But I want to make this a multiple of 5. So what would I get? 25n squared minus 40n plus 15 plus 1. This over here is a multiple of 5. I'll write that down for you. It's 5n squared minus 8n plus 3 plus 1. So what have I shown? It's a multiple of 5 plus 1. I showed this. All right, that's done. By the way, I'm going to stick with the M now. I'm, I, I know I put an M down, but M is fine too. You can use any letter you want. But I know it's all written down for me now. And we're just dealing with the sequence we got. Let me erase this stuff over here. And we'll do it. And next one I'm going to do is 5N minus 3 squared. All right? And if you do that, I want to point out what you get. You get this over here. And I got to see it. Either I'm going to see a multiple of 5 or a multiple of 5 plus or minus 1, but I'm seeing 9. That really disturbs me a great deal. So let me write this down for you. 25m squared, let's see, minus 30m, and that 9 bothers me. i got to make it a multiple of 5. So I'm going to say 10 and then minus 1. That's certainly 9. This is a multiple of 5. What do I mean by that? 5 times 5m squared minus 6m plus 2 minus 1. So I've shown this again. I got the, I got the multiple of 5 minus 1. Let me go to the next one. And then the next one. And there's going to be quite a few to show. All right, what's the next one going to be? I'll write this down for you. 
It's gonna be this guy over here. It's gonna be 25 M squared, uh, minus 10, minus 10 is minus 20 plus four. Again, that four has disturbed me greatly. So what am I gonna do? I'll write it down. So 25 M squared minus 20 M plus four. Well, I'm gonna say 25 M squared minus 20 M plus five minus one. Again, I'm showing a multiple of five. That's five M squared minus four M plus one minus one. Five times some integer minus one. That's what they want me to show. I just did that. Let's go to the next one. Let me erase this business over here. I'm just walking through my work, making sure that that's what you do when you study as well. You're walking through someone's work if you need to. Let me do this one over here. And what does it give you? 25M squared minus 10M plus one. And this is of the exact form I want. What do I mean by that? It's five times 5M squared minus 2M plus one. What are we showing? It's five times some integer plus or minus one. This is done. What's the last one to do over here? Fairly simple to do, it's 25M squared. And I'm showing this one. So we showed all cases, by the way, and that's good. All right, by the way, looking at this one over here, and again, a lot of times you're reading these things, you have no idea where to start. All I know is N is even. I'll write this over here for you. They say if it's even, I'm gonna say it's two times some number. All right, two times some number. But then they go on to say, whatever the number is, it's not a multiple of three. Well, I'm gonna make it a multiple of three. Whoops. I'm gonna make it a multiple of three. But I don't want it to be a multiple of three. So we either have to add something on or take something away. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the number one on. So I hope you realize it's even. Let me show you it's even. How do you show n is even? Divide it by two. What does this give you? 3m plus one. Definitely an integer, it divided by two. So I showed it's even. Let me erase this. I wanna show it's not divisible by three. How do I do that? I'm gonna divide it by three and show you it's got a fraction in it. So what do you get over here? n divided by three. And this is gonna be two times three m, which is six m plus two. I'm gonna divide by three. What do you get over here? Two m plus two thirds. There's my fraction. Definitely not divisible by three. All right, so I, I know what my number looks like. Now, by the way, the fact that I know what it looks like, I don't know if I can do it. So it says n is even, not a multiple of three. n squared plus two is divided by six. Well, I got trouble on my hand. I gotta do n squared for you. Not only do I have to do n squared for you, I have to add two to it. Let me do that first. So what's n squared? It's four. Well, I'm gonna square the three m plus one. That's nine m squared plus six m plus one. And I have to add two to that. I'm gonna do that for you. And it's a lot of work, but I'm gonna do it. It's 36 m squared plus 24 m plus four plus two, which is plus six. What did they say? That would be divisible by six. I don't know, let's see. Well, that last guy looks pretty easy. What do you get over there? Six M squared plus four M plus one. It's divisible by six, we just showed that. All right, let's go to the next question. Next question, a little more difficult. And it says that every even power of an odd number is of the form 8n plus one. All right, I always find this to be a little odd why they said 8n plus one. But they said it, let's put this down then. So what I wanna do is I wanna start talking through that. I know they're using the letter M and I'm gonna to continue to do that by the way. So I'm gonna write down um, something to do with 8m. 8m is not odd. To make 8m odd, all you have to do is add one to it. Then the question becomes is, what's the next odd number? Well, you should realize that odd numbers go up by two, so the next odd number would be 8m plus three. The next odd number would be 8m plus five. 
and you could do this forever, but I have no desire to do so. You could not only go up by two, you could go down by two. So what's down by two from 8m plus one would be 8m minus one. Let me keep going down. What's the next one gonna be? 8m minus, I'm going down by two, right? So three. What's the next one gonna be? 8m minus five. I think you get the idea what we're doing over here. That we're getting a very long list here, all right? And I'm gonna say that I gotta read this again. It says, every even power of an odd number is of the form 8m plus one. Well, you know what I wanna do? I wanna start with an m. And I'm gonna start with an m, and I'm gonna start with m equals, let's start with one. What list would this generate if I'd started with one? I gotta be real careful here. It would start with the number three, and then it would go to five, and then it would go to seven. You get the idea? And then it would go to what? Nine. And then it would go to what? 11. And you could do this all day long, right? My question over here is I wanna get a short list. So if I wanted two, by the way, I know I'm missing one and two, I, I, I'm missing the integer one. If I wanted two, What would the list generate? 16 minus five is 11. So I think I went too far. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cross that off. All right, that's not so bad. And I'm gonna claim over here is I got one, two, three, four. All I have to do is select four terms. That's all I need to do. I need to select four terms from this list over here. By the way, when someone says, what are you gonna select? I tend to select what I think would be the easiest for me to do. So I wanna pick the ones that are of the lowest number. And I'm gonna go through that with you. I'm gonna say these two would be great because there's just a one and a minus one in it. All right, and then I'm gonna go over here but I want to avoid going to the five because I know I have to do even powers and that's really tough. And I'll do this one over here. So I'm gonna say this is my list. Let me erase this stuff over here. I don't need them. I'm gonna claim that I could pick M's here. They're gonna work nicely. For example, if I chose you know, M to be one, what would the list be? Well, it would be five seven, nine, 11. And if I picked M to be two, what would I get? 16 minus three is 13. I get the next one. What's the next one gonna be? Uh, let's see, 15. You get the idea. We can generate a list over here. Now someone says, oh, there's something missing from the list, and I do see that. So what's missing from this list over here? I gotta write them down. So the missing numbers from this list, if we start with M is one, the two missing numbers that are odd would be one and three. So I wanna convince you that every even power of one is of the form eight N plus one. So what's gonna be one to an even power? And they say it would be of this form over here. And I gotta be honest with you, I believe it's obvious, and I'll tell you why it's obvious. It doesn't matter what the N is, right? How do I know that? This number on this side over here, by the way, maybe I should put an M, uh, let me put a different uh, number there. I, I shouldn't use N. Let me say power, I'll call it a P. So I'm gonna say no matter what P I pick, this side over here is gonna be one. Even means P is gonna be one or two or three. What, what would N have to be? N would have to be zero. So I'm gonna say that's pretty easy, all right? Now, by the way, Three is gonna be more difficult, but I'll write it down for you. So what are the even powers of three? I'm gonna write this down for you. This is much more difficult. So it could be three squared. That's an even power. They say it should be of the form eight n plus one. Then they say another even power, you might say three to the Four. That's an even power, right? They say that should be 8n plus 1. 
Then they say three to the even would be six, right? Should be of the form eight n plus one. So I'm just gonna say over here, I hope you realize you got powers, but I gotta start thinking about it. And I, I, I realize if you read this and say it's obvious, I don't think anything is obvious if you don't see it. So I gotta, I gotta go through that with you. And I, I think I can do it. And I'll, I'll point out what I mean by that. We'll look at these as equations and, and I'll write this down for you. And the first equation, I'll, I'll write down what I'm seeing over here, which would be three squared minus one equals eight n. This would be three minus one, three plus one. That's eight n. What would that give you? Two. Oh, you know what? I don't think I really need to go there. I think it's much easier than that for the first one. So I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna erase that. The first one's super easy. Sorry about that. First one's super easy. Why is that? What do you get over here? This is n equals one. By the way, this one's also easy for me. And I'll tell you why. Three to the fourth is 81, so n has to be 10. It's the one beyond this that are difficult for me. And I wanna write that down for you, all right? And I'm gonna say it's gonna be more difficult for me. So I, I gotta show it to you, all right? So I'm gonna write this a little differently. I'm gonna write it as nine. Whoops. You may wonder why nine, because I see eight plus one. I think it has something to do with that, right? So I'm gonna say it's nine. Let's see, that'd be three squared, nine. What would that give you? Even power, right? So three squared. Oops, I'm sorry about that. I got my pen working here. Oh, I know it's not working. I'm not writing the page. I'm sorry about that. I got I was writing off the page. That's why it wasn't working. So a nine. Let me write this three to the six. Is like. I got to think about that. Three to the six would be like three squared cubed. I need time to think about that. Well, let me write that down then. Is that even? Two, four, six. Six is certainly even, right? Well, let me write it down. And I gotta get my eraser out. And this is where thinking comes into play here. And I gotta write it down for you. So let's see. The powers of three that are, that would be three, three to the fourth. I guess I write it down. Three to the, whoops, sorry about that. Three to the six minus one equals eight N. Let's write this over here. What do you get? Three, I'm gonna do squares now. I'm factoring by the way. Does that work? That's three to the six. Yeah, it seems like it works. Let's see if I can do that. Well, you notice, I notice a difference of perfect cubes over here. And that's gonna give me a what? Factor of what? Let's put that down for you. Three to the three is gonna be what? 27 minus one. 27 plus one equals eight n. And this is 26. This is 28, eight n. I'm gonna divide both sides by 28. 
I'm sorry, by eight. I'm sorry about that. And I want to say that's a nice looking N. So I'm going to say this would be divide by two, you get four. This would be 13. Yeah, it goes in beautifully. All right, so that I got the, I got the six done. All right, I'm looking for a general pattern. I'm going to start to erase, by the way. I got a lot of chicken scratch over here. No, six worked out. All right, let's go to the next one. And I'll write the next one down. I'm going to say, you know, nine, nine squared. They did say even powers, right? And I got the three. Let's do nine, let's do nine to the fourth. Oops, sorry about that. Did I do that already? That's nine to the fourth minus one equals eight N. No, I don't think I did that one. That's gonna be three to the eighth power, right? What do you get over there? Nine squared minus one, nine squared plus one equals eight N. Nine squared minus one would be nine minus one 9 plus 1, 9 squared plus 1 equals 8n. This was far easier because 8 divides both sides nicely. And I think I got a general pattern for it. All right? Now, so how do you get a general pattern? I, I looked at them, and I'm going to say something to do with 9s raised to a power. And, you know, looking at it, you know, I'm going to say, you know, just looking at the pattern, by the way, I could write down 9. I could write down 9 squared, I could write down 9, 4, so forth and so on, all right? And the reason for that, I've been looking at it, 8n plus 1, 8n plus 1, 8n plus 1. Basically, it boils down to factoring, and I'm always going to find if I do that, you know, 9 minus 1 equals 8n for the first one, 9, whoops, sorry about that, 9 squared minus 1 equals 8n, 9, 4 minus 1 equals 8n, so forth and so on. And what do I notice about these guys over here? That's eight. This will factor, and there will be a factor of nine minus one. This will be. This will factor. There's a factor of minus one. What am I saying? There's always going to be a factor of eight in that factorization. All right. So let me just point out where that says in your notes. And by the way, when it says it says it's clear, it's not clear until you see it. Uh, certainly, when you see it, you might say it's clear. But it does say over here. You know, the one was easy. The three to an even power is of this form over here which clearly the form of 8n plus 1. I didn't think it was clear, by the way. All right, let's go to the next thing. I know it's tough. What are we looking at? We're looking at this sequence over here. Um, you know, all will involve initial terms divisible by 8. I hope you realize that. When you take these things over here, uh, what do you mean by that? They're binomials. We're raising it to even powers. Uh, when I say an even power, there will be an even power here like 2 or 4. Oh, I did it again. And I got to go back to that section. I think there was section 113. You hit somewhere on the screen, and all of a sudden things go crazy, right? That reason is an extremely long document, by the way. I think we're at 113. If I'm not at 113, I have a tough time finding where I was. Yeah, 113. That's good I can remember that part, right? Sorry about that. Let's go back to what we were doing. I know it's tough. We're over here. And we're reading this section over here now. So what does it say? The even powers of this thing. And again, I was saying that, you know, they're, they're, they're binomials raised to even powers. So I'm always going to see an initial term where there's going to be an 8 raised to some power in it. And it's divisible by 8. All right? And then it goes on to say we'll involve initial terms divisible by 8. And the final term will be of the form 1 or 3. So you realize a binomial, when it gets expanded out, we'll have a bunch of factors of 8 in it in the initial terms. For example, let's say we did, I'll just put an example down, you know, 8m, you know, um, it doesn't really matter what I'm putting over here, but, you know, you look at minus 3 um, to an even power. Let's put 100 down. I hope you realize 100. I hope you realize it's going to be 8 to the 100, and then that's one term has that in it. And eventually it gets down to 8 to, like, you know, 99. Not 99, but, like, like a 9. And then it gets another term. It'll be 8 to the first power. And then when you get the very last term, it's going to be 3 
to the 100. Right? We've done those before, the binomial expansion. The other one is going to be 1 to 100, something like that. If it was, you know, 8m, you know, uh, minus 1 or plus 1, really doesn't matter, plus or minus, really doesn't much matter, 100. You're going to get the last term, but all the other terms have a factor of 8 in it. It's the last term you're worried about, and we've already shown that for the 1 and 3 by looking at this over here. And again, I hope you realize that. We've done that already. All right? So I'm going to say it's, it's, it, this has been shown. But again, it's, it's a narrative. You write that down. And it was hard to, you know, to, to, to think about that. But we just did that. We thought through all the cases, by the way. So let's go to the next one, number 5. Number 5 says prove that n7 minus n is by 42. And i got to be honest with you, that might be tough to do. But what I would do first is I would just start by factoring it. And I don't know if it's going to work out. So uh, when I say try to factor, what do you got? It doesn't look that bad. It's n times n6 minus 1. So I'm going to say that's relatively simple. Now I'm looking at this over here, and there's a variety of ways to factor. I'm not saying there's only one way to do it. I'm going to look at it as being like a difference of perfect squares. So I'm going to say n, n cubed plus 1, n cubed minus 1. Now granted, I'm nowhere near the 42 at this point. I, I don't see the 42 anywhere in the problem. But now I got another problem. I, I got these cube problems over here, and I realize I can factor cubes. All right, so I'll put this one over here, n, and we'll clean it up later. I'm going to do the n cubed plus 1 now. That's going to be n plus 1. And then you're going to get n squared, let's see, minus n plus 1. And I'm going to factor n cubed minus 1. And what are you going to get? n minus 1. And then you're going to get n squared plus n plus 1. All right. I want to just outline this in the notes. When you're doing study, you want to start thinking, gee, where do I go from here? But I want to make sure that you got this part over here. Right. I want to go through carefully to make sure that we got all the factorizations correct. All right. So I'm seeing the n. Oh, I'm sorry, the end's over here. Why don't they put an end there? Oh, I see it here. I'm sorry, I didn't see it. Sorry about that. I, I apologize. I just didn't see it. I was wondering, where was it? Did I forget it? Uh, I see the n plus 1. I see the n squared minus n plus 1. I see the n squared plus n plus 1. And I see the n minus 1. Now, someone says, why did you rearrange those guys? Well, I noticed in the beginning that I have something like this over here, which seems like they're consecutive. What I mean by that, I'm looking at this thing, n minus 1, n, and n plus 1. Like consecutive integer, right? So what I'd like to do is, I just like to look at 42, and I'd like to get a feel for the type of numbers that are in it. All right? I just want to get a feel for the numbers that are in 42. Because I know this thing is, they say it's divisible like 42. I don't know if that's the case. But 42, let me put this on the side for you. Uh, 42. I would say 2, that would give me 21, and then I would say 3 and 7. So I'm going to say 42 is equal to 2 times 3 times 7. All right, now I'm, I'm kind of looking around for something else to do over here. And what I kind of notice is, I'm going to read it to you. I think I did it again. What did I do there? I must hit a button somewhere. Oh, I know what I did. I hit the sidebar, and it went off to a different section. I got to get back to 113 again, and that's a real pain. I got to do it. I got to scroll through the document. Let me go this up here, and I apologize. Second time I did it today. This makes the video a lot longer, right? You know what I'm going to do? I'll do this. You see how long that document is? It's crazy long. Crazy long document. Let's go over here. There, 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 there. 113, right? Let me get it. Sorry about that. And that's me touching the buttons. Yeah, really long doc. Oh, sorry, I'm over here. But anyway, I noticed this over here. Let me just read it to you. I'm not going to try to touch that again. And um, it says over here, this over here, which is like three factorial, all right, one, two, three, all right? It goes on to say use Ramos theorem. It gives you the section number, that's section 680, 
and correlating 681, yeah, you got to go back, read over the notes to justify that n7 minus n is also divisible by 7. All right? So what have we shown? We've shown it's divisible by 1, 2, 3, and we've shown it's divisible by 7, so we've shown it's divisible by 45. Okay, this one over here, again, I'm, I'm going to point out to you, it says prove the fourth power of any number is of the form 5n, 5n plus 1. All right? Let me just quickly read through this with over here. It says, you know, and again, I know it's difficult. I, I realize that. And I got to look back over notes, too, to, to remember what those uh, statements were. But it says, you know, m is prime to 5, this over here, multiples of 5. They give you the section to look at. We do recommend you doing that. I realize I'm cutting close on time over here. These lectures really can't go on too long. Just the introduction over here. Read through it, all right? Here comes the problem, and it's a problem. Getting through the problem set. Some people are better at it than others. I also would recommend working in groups, but here's the deal. Look at these things. What I do is I put down some work, not a lot of work, but some work for the problems. Proofs are always tough to get through. You're not alone. They're tough to get through. A lot of these things, I'm using notation. You may not be aware of. I want to point out what this notation is over here. This is the floor notation. All right, so if I look at that 50 divided by 2, I want to point out is 25. The floor of 25 is 25. But if you put something down like this, I'll write this one over here for you, 50 divided by 2 squared, well, that's 4. I'm going to point out what the floor means for them. Floor positive numbers are pretty easy. 4 does go into 50. That's once. That's a 4. I get a 10, two times. What do you get over there? Eight. You get a remainder, two. So it's 12.5. I want to point out what a floor is. You're looking at integers. What's the integer going to be between 12 and 13? Where's 12.5? Right here. What's its floor? Go down. That's its floor. Its floor is 12. All right? Now, by the way, it gets more difficult with negative numbers, but let's not worry about that. But anyway, this is something that's discussed in the text. It's something worthwhile to know. I kid you not. These things pop up sometimes in the most obscure places, but it can't hurt to know that. I kid you not. can't hurt to know that. By the way, again, 50 factorial, a crazy-looking number, 1 times 2 times 3, yada, 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 all the way up to 50. It's a crazy large number, by the way. But anyway, um, over here they say, what's the highest power of 2 in the 50? I'd hate to be looking for it. I really would. But they got a way of doing it, and I want to point out, you want to, you want to follow that technique they're giving you. Same thing for 3 and 80. They do that. That's a little bit easier because the numbers are... And you can use calculators too, by the way. Go through all the proofs, by the way. I know it's a lot of work. I want to point out also SAGE, which I want to get to right now, has an awful lot of um, routines that have to do with number theory. But what I wanted to do, go through in SAGE over here, and again, SAGE is an open source uh, computer algebra system. Go to the website, you can download it or do the interactive web-based application. What I was doing is just simply, you know, testing out what I was saying in my proofs by using SAGE to help me out with it. And why is that? SAGE can do outrageously tough things, like it can actually do 80 factorial. Oops, sorry about that. It can actually do 80 factorial and then divide it by three to the 37, which I said, by the way, I'm sorry, I, I, I'm just not copying, right? 3 to the 37. And you get a number out of it. It's not bad. You can do it. And it tells you. You can do that if you want. Here's the deal, though. We're not interested in doing SAGE, by the way. But it can't hurt to have this at your disposal. What are we interested in? You work in the problems. And if you see errors in the problems, and I'm not saying there's not error. I'm saying if you do see error, that means it's a given. There'll be error somewhere. Please reach out to me. And this is a pr tough problem set reach out to me. It's a really tough problem set, all right? You start to realize, you know, at least the, the place where this course was taught, this must have been a tremendously difficult book to get through. When it took me a long time to get through the problem set, it's going to take you guys a long time to get through the problem set. But anyway, thank you for listening.